what's going on everyone i want to thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of just my opinion reviews where this one we're at the end of the year baby i just did my top 10 favorite right now i am doing my top 10 worst films of 2018 these are garbage films these films suck these are dumpster fires um i did not enjoy them at all i'm ready to do this I got my bleach right there, baby, ready to go so I can wash down this crap. We're just going to sit that right there. Actually, let me sit this on the floor. May accidentally knock it over and make a mess, and I'd be really upset. But, uh, yeah, we're going to take a few swigs of that. Uh, you know, anyway. But <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So, I actually have uh, 11 films right now. Uh, I know this said top 10, but I, I'm, I, I just felt like I had to do a uh, an honorable mention. So top 10 worst films of 2018. You may like these films, okay? And if you like them, that's perfectly fine. I'm not judging you. All films are subjective, but I thought these were an effing mess. All right, coming in at number 11 for our honorable mention is I'm, I'm glad we don't have to see these films anymore. I don't own it. I never would. But that is Fifty Shades Free. This movie is so bad that I didn't finish it. Uh, and I watched this at home. You know, I was just like, you know, I just don't want to do this anymore. The plot is stupid. Uh, I remember uh, Fifty Shades of... Uh, was it Fifty Shades of Black or Gray? or what, what? Fifty Shades of Gray was the first one. I forgot the second one, but the second one was on my top 10 worst of 2017. And uh, Fifty, Shades, Fifty, Shades, Fifty Shades Free is on the same thing, on the same list. It's being directed by Mr. James Foley. Uh, now, I will admit, this film right here is not as bad as the last one. The last one was just like, just god-awful terrible. But this, the, the whole relationship in this film just doesn't seem realistic at all. I like strong characters. Sebastian, or whatever his name is, he's just so weak and insecure. But they, you know, but he's portraying the rich guy that gets everything. And I'm just like, that, that just doesn't match. This is no one I can follow. There's really nothing kinky about these films to me. And, I, you know, I'm thinking I'm supposed to be seeing some stuff that I've never seen before. And I made this joke even last year about I'm wanting to go in and see people hang from ceilings. And I, I've never seen that before. Um. Um, but, you know, I, I really didn't enjoy the film. I thought it was horrible um, and I, I turned it off. That's why that is coming in at number 11. Coming in at number 10, top 10 worst of uh, 2018 is Pacific Rim Uprising. This is so disappointing, disappointing because if you go back early in the year, this film right here was on my uh, it was on my most anticipated film list of 2018 it ended up being one of the worst. Now, the only thing that this film did better than the first Pacific Rim is some of the choreography in the fighting was a little bit more fluid and tight. And you can see what was going on, especially because it was uh, shot during the day. But the story in this film was just like they just didn't care. I mean, it just got completely silly to a point to where you just couldn't take it seriously anymore. I mean, like the characters were dumb. What was his name? Charlie Day was in this. And I liked them in the first film, but they just turned him into like a, a mindless moron. Uh, robot or whatever just it, it was like it turned into like a, a poor Saturday morning cartoon uh, not one of the good ones the ones with like a two dollar budget but I didn't enjoy it I was highly disappointed with this film right here um, it just wasn't good and I like the director Stephen Knight Stephen S. Knight that did some uh, daredevil things on Netflix and other stuff but this film right here just it, it just wasn't for me uh, coming in at number nine is Super Troopers 2, uh, directed by J. Chandra Lascalahor. Uh, I know I butchered that. Please forgive me. And then what, what's crazy is this movie, I think it came out on 420, and this is a stoner movie, meaning that you most likely will enjoy it if you're high or drunk or intoxicated in, uh, to some level, to some degree. Uh, I walked out of the theater on this as well, uh, which is crazy because... I am extremely, ext I mean, y'all think y'all have seen my silliness? It, it ain't completely come out yet, but I'm one of the silliest, goofiest people on the planet. I love dumb stuff. I love silly stuff. I love spoofs, satires, and all of that, but I could not get behind this film. I did not know what was going on. It was just too over the top for me. I mean, and I, I, a film, you're not going to like a film if you, if you hate it. Being drunk or high or both is not going to make you like it that much more. I mean, maybe a little bit. It's not going to take you on the complete other end of the spectrum to where from hating it to liking it. I mean, I may give another try one day because there are people that did like this film. But to me, I just couldn't do it. Uh, it was just too much. It was, it was just too much. They were reaching too much for me. And, uh, you know, it's one of the worst films that I've seen this year. 
Coming in at number eight um, is a film that I was kind of looking forward to because I, I like the premise, even though it's scary. It's somewhat realistic. Um, it was directed by uh, uh, jo uh, Gerard McMurray, and that is, yeah, a black dude, too. And I remember in my review for this, I'm like, I can't believe a black guy would do this. Uh, but that is The First Purge. Um, it's the fourth in the franchise. There, I, I enjoyed the second purge the most. The third one was okay. The first one was completely disappointment. But this one right here was just a big ball of propaganda racism. And I mean, I say that just because, like, I just could not stand the ending to where you have all these innocent brown and black people that are just minding their own damn business, sitting in their homes, not wanting to do anything to anybody, and they're just getting slaughtered for no damn reason. I mean, just these evil white supremacists, just like, hey, let's just go kill a bunch of black and brown people that aren't, aren't doing a goddamn thing. I, I just did not like that. It was uncomfortable to me. And the way they set it up, like, all oh, the black people is going to win. No, they didn't. They, they all lost. You can go review. You can go check out the review for this on, on my channel. But I was highly disappointed about it. It got really unrealistic with uh, what's the guy's name in this movie? The the main guy. Let me look it up real quick. Uh, he just turned into like a, a ninja robot um, assassin at the end. I'm like, bro, where did you get your training? Um, it this just doesn't make any sense. I like the guy too. Uh, he was the boyfriend in the Insecure TV show right now. I still need to watch season three of that, but his name is uh Yylan Noel, I believe. His name was Demetri in this film. Um, you know, it started out decent but ended pretty horrible, and um, I just didn't like it, so that's why it's coming in at my number eight for the worst films of 2018. Coming in at number seven. For the worst films of 2018 is the strangers pray at night now the first strangers film i think i enjoyed that one right here but this one i didn't there's a review for it on my channel um i don't remember much about it to be honest with you other than i was highly disappointed uh with everything about it especially the characters in this film stupid stupid characters they just did not use the brain for some reason i mean i take I take my cell phone with me everywhere I go, literally everywhere I go. I don't even, I don't leave it in my car. I mean, and that's, I feel like I have to. Even if I'm running, even if I place an order to get like some, 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 uh, some salmon with some, um, some grilled squash, you know, and quinoa, or something like that. That's one of my favorite plates. <laughs> um, even if I'm running in to go get it, I always take my cell phone with me just in case something pops off and I got to record it or, you know, just to defend myself or defend somebody else out there, you know, and just the, they just did some incredibly stupid things with a cell phone in this movie. And I, I just was done with it. it. It's just like you just rolling. I was like, I mean, come on. Can we please get some type of competent, intelligent characters? Everybody in this film was just a complete dumbass. And uh, I, I just can't get behind that. Coming in at number six um, is a film directed by Tyler Perry. No, it is not that film you think it is. It is Nobody's Fool. Oh, my gosh, Tiffany Haddish. What the hell is wrong with you? This movie was not funny. I mean, no, it had a couple of funny parts, but golly, the sex scene that you were trying to do at the very beginning of the film with Michael Blackston, it just wasn't funny. This film was over the top. Tiffany Haddish, I, I, I'm, I'm rooting for you, okay? Now, in real life, you made some comments about this and that or whatever that I, I found that were highly ignorant, but that's okay. I'm not a genius myself either, okay? Uh, and I, I really feel that you have some talent, my sister, because you was funny in high school. I liked you in high school. I did. But girls tripping this thing right here. Come on now. You know, you're one for two. And uh, I, I'm rooting for you, okay? So I'm, I'm still trying to give you, a, you know, a little credit here. But this film right here was just not, it was not funny. It was lazy. It was stupid. Um, it was just over the top. It just wasn't funny. It just wasn't funny. Tyler Perry, I don't know what you're doing. You are a decent director, but you've been uh, delivering us a bunch of crap. I don't think anyone enjoyed this film uh, for the most part. Um, it just wasn't good. I like Tika Sumner in this, but not only was Tiffany Haddish's performance just stupid to me, but it was just the story of catfishing itself was just like dumb. I mean, Tika Sumner and Tiffany Haddish are, are, are sisters. Uh, Tika Sumner, I love, she's, gosh, she's so gorgeous. That's, you, I just got to, oh, you are a gorgeous woman, a gorgeous chocolate woman at that. Just, I, I love, I, I love all shades, but. You know, I, I got to give it to my chocolate sisters out there that have it kind of rough. But uh, you, you are gorgeous, my sister. But anyway, um, you know, the whole catfisher thing is just kind of old and played out to me. You know what I'm saying? I, it's just not realistic. And there was just nothing in this film that would just be like realistic to me, you know. And um, 
I, I just wasn't feeling this. So, guys, that is my number uh, coming in at number six for the top um, top ten worst films of 2018 is Nobody's Fool. Coming in at number five, top five worst of 2018 is a film directed by Lasse Hallstrom. That is The Nutcracker in the Four Realms. Oh, man, I think I gave this film like a three or a four out of ten. You can go check out my review. Uh, I don't even think I like the effects in this film. I didn't like the characters in this thing. I don't like the story. I don't know what was going on. The pacing was off. I know the Nutcracker has to do with like ballet and theater arts and things like that. The the ballet that they just kind of shoehorned in didn't fit. The tone was all over the place. I don't know if this is for children or adults. I don't know who this is for. It just wasn't a good film. I didn't enjoy it. I don't even want to talk about it anymore. But The Nutcracker and the Four Realms that comes in number five. Coming coming in number four, this was another disappointment of mine. And that is The Nun, directed by Corin Hardy. It, this was so disappointing because the way The Nun was introduced in The, um, the Conjuring Part 2 was great. Um, it really did leave you at the edge of your seats wanting more and it's like, okay, what is going on with this nun right here? But this right here, it just wasn't scary. It was goofy. It did not make any sense. Here you have these, these, um, uh, uh, these, uh, these priests at the Vatican, at the Vatican. And they're like trying to, you know, pull together like the Avengers, the best priest of all time in the world to fight these demonic forces. But they choose somebody that doesn't even, that hasn't even, I, I don't know what the term is in the, in the Catholic faith, but. She haven't even like said her vows or something like this. So she's not even like a full nun or a priest. But you want her to go fight this super demon with no experience. That doesn't make any sense to me. The characters in this movie kept falling for the same uh, trip, the same trap over and over and over and over and over again. I mean, I don't know how many times you have to just stand in the same spot and get hit over in the head until you say to yourself, OK, I'm standing right here. I keep getting hit. Let me move out of the way. These characters just did not learn from their lessons, and it was just dumb, and I just didn't like it at all. You can go check out my, my full review for this film. It is on my channel. Please subscribe and go do so. But that is uh, number four is The Nun coming in at my worst film of 2018. All right, guys, we are down to the final three, top three worst films of 2018. One of these films really breaks my heart that is on this list. The other two I really don't care about. But coming in at number three is Proud Mary. It came out January. I love you, Taraji. You are a fantastic actress, my sister. I'm supporting you. You're great in um, you're great in everything you do. You was great in uh, Hidden Figures. I own that film. You were great in Baby Boy. You were great in everything else. Let me tell you everything. You was great in The Karate Kid. You was great in Hustle and Flow. You was great in Benjamin uh, the the Curious Case of Benjamin Button. You know what I'm saying? Uh, what else was you good in? You was good in No Good Deed. You was good in um, Pretty much think like a man. You're a great actress, so I'm just not going to crap on you, my sister. Uh, but you was not good in this film. Um, you were not good. The story wasn't good. I was not convinced of you as being this uh, this cold-blooded assassin. I remember saying in my review, you wasn't a cold-blooded assassin. You were a warm-blooded assassin. I don't know. Also, at the end of this movie, for some reason, Tarashi P. Henson turned into Neo from The Matrix. And she was able to just to dodge all these bullets and not get shot. I mean, it was like 10 guys that had her trapped in the alley, unloading like assault rifle clips and rounds at her, just unloading on her. And she just did not get shot one time. It was dumb. I did not enjoy this movie at all. Um, it, it just wasn't good. The story was all over the place. And that's why that's coming in at number three, Proud Mary, worst films of 2018. Down to the final two guys. Coming in at number two is a stream disappointment. Like I just said, I actually had this film. If you go back and check out my top, my most anticipated of 2018, this film was on it. Um, it was written, uh, no, it was directed by Miss uh, Ava DuVernay, Sister Ava DuVernay, uh, who did Selma and also did 13th, the documentary on Netflix. But A Wrinkle in Time, um, this film was abysmal. It was horrible. Uh, the tone was all over the place. Uh, I honestly said in my review that Oprah Winfrey looked like an oversized uh, cookie monster or something sp uh, sprinkled with glitter. Uh, my full review for this is on the on my channel. But uh, man, I can even tell the tone of my voice died down because I'm so disappointed with this. The effects in this film were the worst. Um, there was just no chemistry between the characters, even like the witches. Visually, things just did not make sense. I don't know why Oprah was so big at points and times. It just did not match 
some of the effects they was using with the powers, like with uh, Reese Witherspoon. There was, I mean, she took one character in the air and nearly got him killed. I'm like, what was the point of that? Did that did not progress the story on? The little boy in this film, I remember, creeped the hell out of me. Uh, he was like possessed by demons. It just was not a film that it, it was good. It, it just was horrible on all fronts. Uh, I really did love uh, Storm Reed. That was the only thing I liked about her. I liked the little nod that, um, you know, she had with her hair being curly and not being confident about it because she feels it's supposed to be straight. But that's just something black people or mixed people deal with. You know, we will fix it. We'll fix it. Uh, but this film just was not good on all fronts. Um, it, it hurts me to talk about it because uh, I was looking forward to it so much and I want Ever DuVernay to do well. Now, technically, this film did uh, break a record because she's the first film black filmmaker to make a film that reached over $100 million, so that's great. But at the same time, this is one of Disney's biggest loss. The loss that this film made financially, it really hurts my soul. And you're like, why are you bringing it up, Brandon? The reason why I'm bringing it up is because I don't want films especially black films to lose at the box office because if they don't make money we won't get we won't they won't get made you know what i'm saying so um and i lost a ton of money i was trying to look up the a wrinkle in time i was trying to i don't know why this is not working i'm, I'm not gonna um search anymore uh but it, it lost a lot of money again how do you do that you take the worldwide gross sales and then you take whatever that is so if a film makes 200 million dollars worldwide uh, about 33% of that goes to the theater slash theater owners. Okay. Then you subtract the production budget. Then you subtract the marketing budget. What you have left after all that is what your profit is. Okay. Um, the budget for this film was 103. The production budget for this film was $103 million. The marketing budget, I think I found this reporting in IGN was an additional $125 million. So that's $228 million. Um, uh, yeah. So Wrinkle in Time, it made $132 million worldwide. So, I mean, you can do the math. But anyway, guys, that's a Wrinkle in Time comes in at number two. All right, guys, a lot of you guys probably already know what this film is. It is the worst film, in my opinion, by light years. In 2018, we're going to go ahead and bring out the bleach again on this right here. Shake it up, shake it up. You know what I'm saying? This film was horrible. This review for this film is on my channel right now. It is actually my most viewed review. And that's actually disappointing because I remember when I reviewed this film, as soon as I stopped, as soon as I pressed stop on the camera, I said to myself, Brandon, that was a horrible review. You were just kind of ranting and rambling. You didn't really say anything. You really didn't give a good idea why you didn't like this film because it was just that frustrating. So if you want to go see my review for this film, go check out my spoiler review for this film. But guys, coming in at number one, my the worst film of 2018 by far <laughs> right there is tyler perry's acrimony gosh damn it this film sucks so bad i did not like a god dang thing in this whole movie tyler perry you should be ashamed of yourself sir because this was the laziest attempt of filmmaking that i've possibly ever seen in my entire life and the reason why i said it is tyler perry is because i've seen you make good films before you are i'm not going to say you're the best filmmaker in the world but i do respect your hustle i do respect your grind but sometimes you know um less is more you know, it, it, what, what is the phrase I'm looking for? I can't even think about it right now because this this film right here is uh, is clouding my judgment. But it's not about um, I can't think of the phrase that I'm trying to say. You know what I'm trying to say? Where I I, I can't think of it. This film right here is is is, is screwing up in my head. But the green screen in this film, like, what are you doing, bro? It's like I understand the effects were so bad. You can. It was blatantly obvious that these actress these actors actresses was not on location. At the very end of the movie, uh, Taraji P. Henson turns into a superhero. It turns into some type of horror flick. She just gets superpowers from out of nowhere, becoming like some Black Manta stealth ninja. It, that, that doesn't make sense. Um, uh, what was her name? Let me look it up real quick. Uh, the little girl in this movie, too. She was in another film. The way that she gave up the nookie at the very beginning of the film to this guy and then try to blame him. I mean, 
This girl, she gave, she lost, lost her, I don't know if she, I can't remember if she was a virgin or not, but gave it up at, at the funeral for her mom and then tried to blame the guy. It just didn't make any, the, the dialogue in this film was bad. Like, it just, none of the situations in this entire movie were realistic. It was just bad acting, a bad, bad, uh, unrealistic story. The effects were bad. The pacing was bad. Tyler Perry continuing to put vocabulary lists up on the, th up on the screen like we're going to have a test at the end of the movie. It just didn't make any sense. I mean, it, the tone was all over the place. The acting was bad. The story was bad. The effects was bad. It was just a horrible, horrible film. I mean, like I wanted to leave. People were leaving in the theater. Um, but I think the dialogue was the worst. I mean, the husband was weak. It, it, it's just like the way the family was talking to each other. I, I was like, okay, you know, like one, some of the couples, like I, I'm not finna say that this does not, this is not, this is not real in the real world to where like married, like multiple married couples live in the same house. That is true in some cultures. It is. Okay. Uh, even my parents went before I was, of course, before I was born, they were asked by another couple, Hey, you know, we all, we're married, y'all married, y'all want to live in the same house. And my parents are like, nah, we're good over here. But the way it was discussed in this film, it's like, come on, man, that, that is just not normal. So, uh, go check out my review for this film. Please go check out my spoiler review for this film. I hated this movie with the passion. Tyler Perry, seriously, bro, you should be ashamed of yourself. This, this whole thing was, was just, God, this film was an abomination, shitstorm, dumpster fire. I hated this movie and it is not only the one of the worst I've seen this year, one of the worst movies I've seen in my whole entire life. It's just a freaking disgusting. Ah. So guys, um, the, you know, that, that's it right there. That is just my opinion on my top 10 worst films of 2018. Um, if you guys like these films, hey, that's okay. I could not stand them. And let's go ahead and uh, X that out right there. We're going to take the list I got and bottle it up and throw it away. Uh, we're done with that. Hopefully, we, don't, we won't have any worse films than that in 2019 but like i said guys that is just my opinion for my top 10 worst films of 2018 what did you think did you like my list did you hate my list did it turn you on did it turn you off do you agree with me or do you disagree with me let me know down in the comment section below let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing if you like this video go ahead and give me the thumbs up if you don't that's fine but you can still subscribe to my channel you can also look me up on social media facebook instagram and twitter all that good stuff it's right there at the bottom of your screen and i made it very easy by providing links to all the good stuff there in the description box below but guys i just want to thank you again for tuning into my opinion slash review for my top 10 worst films of 2018 guys and stay tuned because right after this i'm gonna be shooting my top 10 best films of 2018 but guys again i want to thank you so much for tuning in and before you go don't forget that my name is brandon keith avery and that's just my opinion peace